The story is told of a, a man who was hired to, to paint the church, to paint the outside of the, the church. And, and as he uh, bought all of his supplies and, and got the, the job started, he hadn't progressed too far until he realized he was using more paint than he expected. And he knew that he was going to run out of paint if he wasn't careful. And, and he you know, debated what he, what he should do. And, and uh, he thought, if I go out and buy more paint, it's going to cut into my profit margin. And what, what am I going to do? And so he decides he's going to, to stretch the paint. He's, he's going to, to add some water to it to, to make it go a, a little bit further. And, and you know, he, he paints the exterior of the church. And, and uh, just as he, he's finished with the job, a big storm cloud comes rolling in. And it just opens up and, and um, you know, it begins to pour down rain. And all the paint is washed off the church. And then he hears a voice from heaven that said, Repaint and thin no more. (laughs) The Greek word translated as repentance carries with it the idea of rethinking or reconsidering something after it's happened. You know, theologically, the, the word repent carries with it the, the idea of, of being sorry for past actions and wanting to do something different in the future. You know, when we are, when we sin, when we have something that we need to repent of, when, when we're walking in a direction that is away from God, that would be called sin. And so when we're walking in one direction that's away from God and we repent, repentant carries with it the idea of turning around and going in the opposite direction. And so the opposite direction of sin is walking in God's direction. Walking in, in the opposite direction of sin you know, is, a, is an issue of us walking into to the arms of Jesus. You know, repentance is difficult. Re- repentance is, is hard on, on our pride because it means that we're, we're admitting that we're wrong. We're hesitant re- to re- repent because we want to convince others that we, we have it all, all together. And, and if we repent, what will others think? What will others say? As we think about what it means to be an authentic follower of Jesus... You know, we need to consider Jesus' instructions. And those instructions are that we need to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. What is it that we need to turn our backs on in our life in order that we're walking in Jesus' direction? You may, may have heard the story this week on, on the news about a new billboard campaign that's happening uh, in central Indiana and I think in Indianapolis in particular. Uh, the billboards uh, that are going up read like this. It says, you don't need God to hope, to care, to love, to live. Your bishop also wrote about the, the billboards uh, this week. As, uh, he writes a kind of a, a weekly email that he sends out to pastors and anyone, uh, anyone in congregations that wants to receive it. He calls it his epistle. You know, uh, the, you know, Paul, who wrote letters, those letters were called epistles. And so in the electronic age, our bishop calls his you know, notes that he sends out as epistles, uh, you know, putting the, the electronic twist on there. But as he, he had some reflections on what this group was, was doing, He concluded by saying, this campaign is a sad reminder that so many people today are trying to live their lives without God. As Jesus was beginning his public ministry, that's what was happening there as well. People were trying to live their lives without God. They were trying to live it in their own way. They're trying to live their lives without God. And and so Jesus' message to them is repent. You know, Turn around. Go in the opposite direction that you're headed. Change the way that you're doing things. 
Turn your back on sin and walk in God's direction. You know, this morning there, there are some of you who may need to, to do that turnaround for the first time. That turn around for the first time and say, you know, I'm headed the wrong way in life and God, I need to, to head in your direction. I need to ask forgiveness of, for my sins and I need to put my faith in Christ. There are some today that you need to, to take that first step in your faith journey during this Lenten season. There are others who you've invited Christ into your heart. You've repented of your sins, but that doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you haven't had some struggles and, and challenges along the way. And as you enter this Lenten season, I want you to think about what is it in your life that you need to turn your back on and walk in in the opposite direction? What is it that you need to, to repent of? Are you unwilling to, to forgive someone who has, has hurt you so badly? Maybe you need to be more loving to those who you find it hard to love. Maybe you need to be more loving to those who cannot give anything back to you in return. Maybe you need to stop going certain places on the internet. Maybe you need to, to stop spending so much time on Facebook and spend more time in God's book. The kingdom of heaven is near. We, need, we may not be so, so bold as to put up a, a billboard that says, I don't need God. But sometimes we act that way. We live our lives in, in such a way that, that we say, I, I don't need God. This Lenten season is a time for us to, to get a, a spiritual tune-up, to make some, some changes, to, to make some incremental steps or take some intentional steps in God's direction. In your bulletin this morning, um, there should have been a green card. Now, I've seen enough of them on the floor. I don't know that all of you have your green card. Um, so if you don't have a green card, you can take a bulletin. You can take something out of the, out of the um, pew. Don't, don't take a page out of the hymnal. But um, you know, just something to, to write on. And what I want you to, to do is, you know, you know even now how it is that the Holy Spirit is challenging you and convicting you. What, what is it that you need to repent of? What is it that you need to turn your back on and walk in God's direction? What I want to invite you to do is to, to write that down on this card or on some other piece of paper. And, and in a few moments during our, our time of preparing for communion, during the time of confession, we're going to sing a hymn and want to invite you to, to bring the card and to put that in the shredder to offer that as, as, a, as an offering, as a, as a sacrifice to God of what it is that, that you need to repent of as we, we begin this Lenten season. You know, Jesus' invitation to those who were, were listening to him on that day, were, his invitation was repent. Turn your back on sin and walk in God's direction. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near.